Okay, and so now that we have that, the next step is to go ahead and evaluate this integral. And really quick, there's two different ways we can do this. So as I showed, the first way is with a lowercase i here, we can just get the integral. This is the answer we're looking for. The other way is we can define uh, this integral. Let's say, oh, I don't know, we'll have to give our integral a name. Let's say g. Okay. So now g has been added to our list of variables. All right. And I can now look at g value. Okay. One way is to just define it like this. And another way is that we can say, since I've already got capital G defined, I can just take the value of whatever that is. Okay. So this gives me a way to just sort of handle things. Here's the symbolic integral, G. G val now is what happens when I actually perform that integration and get the new function. Okay. And so here's the next thing we're going to do. We're going to look at taking integration by parts on, cap, uh, on g with, uh, with a capital I. And we're going to tell it which integration by parts to perform. And the way that we do this is we say parts, and we tell it the integration that we're looking for, and the u substitution we want it to use. So remember, integration by parts always relies on u and dv. Okay, And so this is saying to look at this with u is equal to e to the ax. Okay, And so if you were to do this by hand, you would write e to the ax, and you would look at um, u is equal to that part, dv is this part. So what you have right here is exactly uv minus the integral of v du. Right? So that's exactly what it's done for us. Okay, and now let's give that a name. And then we'll look at doing this again because with this type of an integral, we have to do parts twice, right? That's the whole problem with the exponential and trigonometric functions when they're multiplied together, that you have to do parts twice, okay? So we're going to take our first result and integrate by parts again using the same u. Okay. And what this has done is given us two terms. And if you look carefully, this term looks strikingly familiar, familiar with this um, integration that we had begun with. Okay. So now this next step, in order to solve for the integral using integration by parts in Maple, Here's what we'd have to do. We have to use the solve command. Oops, I keep on getting kicked out of math mode here. Okay, so here's what I'm going to say. I'm going to say that what I get from integration by parts is what happens when I solve part 2 minus g um, g defined by the integral here, okay, as an equation, and I'm going to set that equal to zero, okay, and I'm going to solve that for g. Oh, and what have I done here? I've got there. I want to define that. Okay, so I'm solving. Okay, what would happen if I basically Here's a way we could look at this as well. I could say that my original integral g is equal to part 2. Okay, and I want to solve that for g. But the, ma the way Maple wants to see that written is I want 0 on one side and I want everything else on the other. Okay, and so this is how we get part 2 minus g. So that I have 0 on, on the same side. And let's see, something didn't quite 
work out. We want to get just what the integral is equal to. So sometimes this happens, and here's what we want to do to fix this. Let's take a step back and just display, maybe on a line below, what is this part here? OK, and this is what happened. This is the problem. And like I said, sometimes Maple does this. It's looking at this quantity g. This is little g from above here as not really working, not collapsible, simplifiable with this part right here. Okay, Even though the integrand is the same and you've got this constant a squared and b squared, it's not quite relating the two. So here's what we can do. If I type in simplify, okay, Let's see, did that fix what I needed it to fix? Um, I think so. Because now this integration here and this integration here, it's on the same line. So let's try this. I'm going to copy this out. Oh, I see. Let's try this. Let's try it this way. Okay, I'm going to copy this. Okay, and so this is what happened. When I simplified the expression before I asked Maple to solve for it, it recognized the fact that g, the integration I was after, had appeared in two different places, and so it was successfully able to solve for those. Okay, whereas again, if I had the same expression without simplify, it didn't quite see what was going on. It didn't quite catch the trick that I was after with the integration by parts. Okay, and so in order to do a problem like this, this is what you'd have to do. You'd have to have solve, simplify, and then write it where you've got the integration by parts minus the expression you're after equal to zero. And then comma, the second part is telling it what to solve for. Solve for g. Okay, and so this right here is telling us that g, the integration, is equal to this quantity right here. Okay, where have we seen this quantity? Well, you can almost see it looks quite a bit like this one. Maybe the algebra is a little bit off uh, in terms of the sine of x being first here, whereas it's second there. Okay, and so here's the last step we could do. Let's check that they're make make sure that they're equivalent. Okay, like so. Oops, uh, there we go. Okay, and here's how we do this. We can take g val minus g parts, okay, and subtract the two. And if they're the same quantity, then the difference between them should be zero. And as before, the reason it's not liking this is because we need to simplify the expression. So let's simplify and drum roll. Do we get zero? Yes, we do. Okay, so that's how you can use Maple to perform integration by parts. Um, sure, you can quickly do the integration here and just let Maple do all the heavy lifting. Or sometimes if you want to see the steps and do parts a few times and solve for the integration like so, you can do it that way. And then, of course, to verify that they're the same thing.